Welcome to the first English as an International Language Webinar Series 1. I am Joey Andrew Santos and I will be your moderator for today's webinar session. Before we formally open today's talk, I would like to give some reminders. So first, our program will, will run this way. So we'll have three speakers for this session and followed by our question and answer um, forum. So we will start with our very first speaker. Just to let everyone know, we will have two different um, parts in this talk. The first talk will be about the role of technology in the three areas, and that will be followed by the way we address it, or perhaps how we actually do it. So let's start with our very first speaker. Our first speaker is a lecturer at the Department of Linguistics and the Assistant Dean on Curriculum and Pedagogical Development and Academic Services at the Faculty of Arts, Chilalongkorn University. He earned his Bachelor Honors from Mahidon University and his PhD from Chilalongkorn University. He has received a Silver Award in Research at the National Creative Innovative Competition for his paper titled Augmented Reality Learning Media on Speech Production Mechanism. Last year, he was awarded excellence in teaching for a new lecturer. His research interests include acoustic phonetics, foreign language speech, and applied linguistics for marketing communications. Everyone, let us all welcome Ajahn Dr. Sujinat Jitwirit Yanont. Yes, um, thank you very much, Joey, for your introduction. And the title of um, our webinar today is Reinventing English Language Teaching and Testing in the Midst of Digital Transformation. I am a linguist and from the Department of Linguistics. So what I'm going to share with you today is uh, from a um, linguistic perspective, but uh, with um, implication for English language teaching. And my expertise um, is phonetics. So the three concepts that I try to bridge the gap today are digital transformation, phonetics, and English language teaching. So let's start with a very important keywords of today, digital transformation. Digital transformation is an innovative use of digital technology to transform the traditional ways of doing things. So what about digital transformation and education? Digital transformation impacts on education in many ways, like uh, it transforms the traditional ways of teaching and learning. So what is the traditional way of teaching and learning, especially in the context of Thai, of Thailand, now uh, like we have a students, may, maybe a number of students per class, and we have a teacher. Not normally the teacher is speaking or teaching in front of the class, um, sometimes we may have like in class practice or um, discussion and for sure we have a lot of homework and excitement. This is like a scenario of a teaching in Thailand. But what about the transformation? When the digital transformation impacts the education? The first one is not about is not only technology but also education process. The process of teaching, learning, the mindset of, his, of the teacher and students are different. Um, it is no longer constrained to a specific time or place. Uh, with technology, we can have like a flexible learning pathway, or we have like um, flexible time and places that we can learn. And it is a measurable, developable, uh, develop, developable and goal-oriented. Um, so let's get to the point, um, digital, digital transformation and English language teaching, especially for teaching English pronunciation. It's like um, with technology, instructors can have like a techno 
like a very sophisticated tools for teaching and assessment, which lead to effective ways of teaching. And for students, um, the approach or the setting or situation of the classroom should be more student-centered, which could lead to custom experience. With technology, everything seems to be easier and flexible. So what I'm going to um, give you an example of this scenario is uh, my uh, is the method used in phonetics teaching for such a long time. It is an audio visual method for teaching pronunciation. Um, audio visual method is like a teaching and learning from looking at sound. When we think of sound, we, uh, we may see like a, we listen to the sound, but with, with this method, we can see uh, like uh, the spectrogram or the sound wave for the sound. So what we need, the first one is a digitized voice to record the voice, like uh, the voice of the teacher or the voice of um, the students, but should be many students to see like um, the, their performance on uh, speaking or pronunciation. And two devices that we need is a technology, basic technology and the basic phonetics. Sound spectrogram is like uh, when we pronounce the produce sound, the sound wave can be recorded and it can show like a 3D visualization of the sound produced by speakers. And this is a sound spectrogram, it's a visualization of sound. It is 3D in the sense that the horizontal axis show the duration, the vertical show the frequency, and the grayscale show like intensity. And today I could I'm going to introduce you like a very basic spectrogram reading that can be applied to English language teaching and learning. And um, this is a program that um, as a linguist we use it. Um, it is free to, to uh, it's free to download and it's friendly to um, to like um, new users. I'm I'm going to give you an example of the three words: what, wash, and watch. These three words are in the minimal set. That is to say, um, the first, um, the um, initial consonant and the vowel are the same, but the different is the final consonant. The first one is uh, the plosive sound, like what. The second one is a fricative sound, wash. And the third one is Africa, is a watch. To explain it phonetically, for the plosive sound, it's like a Two articulators make a complete closure, like a what, complete closure, and we release what. And for fricative, two articulators form like a narrow constriction. So you can hear like a fizzy sound, a turbulence of sound, like wash. And for the African, it's a combination stop with fricative. It could be like watch. The three sounds are different in English different meaning because the three sounds are different phonemes. But for Thai, most of Thai students pronounce it what, what, and what. This is because um, uh, because of the Thai sound system, sure and sure fricative and African sound in the place of articulation as a palatal do not exist in Thai sound system. Moreover, fricative and African sound are not allowed in the final position. So that is the reason why um, Thai speakers pronounce it the same. They um, pronounce these three sounds, three words the same. And it is also the problem for perception. Most of students cannot differentiate three, uh, the three sounds with the perception. So with the use of South Spectrica, we can see that the three sounds explicitly, we can see that the different sound wave, like in a plosive, it like um, a gap, um, like in a front of position, because when you make a complete closure, um, the, intensity, the intensity stop, no energy. But, but for fricative, like a friction sound, it's like a friction, a noise and some intensity in the waveform. But for Africa, we can see that it's stop plus fricative like a pause, a gap, um, followed by like a friction, a noises. This is very important 
because of when the uh, learners can see the like a visualization of their sound, they can understand more, and they can use it to practice the uh, speaking and or or like a pronunciation to make it more clearer. Um, previous studies have indicated production and perception improvement of participants um, when um, compared to group with or without audio visual instruction. And it is very good to hear that they have a positive attitude towards this method. They love to see their, like, their visualized sound, they love to see their performances. So um, this is like uh, the overview picture of um, what um, I want to convey the message to you that we can use technology and like uh, some basic linguistics to um, use in like a digital transformation. And for the next round, I will give you more details about this method. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ajahn Sujinat, for that wonderful presentation. And that's that's how we could up, how we could understand different technology as we try to teach pronunciation to our students. At this point, we're moving on to our next speaker. Our next speaker is an assistant professor at Chulalongkorn, Uni Chulalongkorn University Faculty of Education. She has earned her bachelor's degree with honors from Chulalongkorn University, her MS from University de paris Sorbonne, and her PhD from Chulalongkorn University. She currently serves as program director for the postgraduate programs in English as an international language and the Teaching English as a Foreign Language program. Her research interests include technology and ELT, curriculum and materials development, teaching methodology, reading instruction, and classroom-based research. Let us all welcome Assistant Professor Dr. Pon Pimon Sukawati. Well, thank you, Julie, for a nice presentation. So let me start by, you know, I'm a teacher, so I would like to start by greetings. Okay, how about, you know, you grab your cell phone, your the audience, and then scan this QR code, and, um, you know, and put the enter code of seven, um, four, seven, eight, seven, and eight. So, how to say hello in your language. Let me start by greetings. Thank you. Scan the QR and type your hello in your language and share with the community. I'm thrilled to see, you know, how many languages can we like see here? Oh, a lot of Thai participants here. A lot of Sawadika, Sawadika, right? When you know what, I use menti.com and when the letters like become bigger than, you know, other um, um, other like languages, which means that the majority who answer, they use Thai language here. So let me continue to the presentation. Well, thank you for a nice greetings from everyone. Okay, so let me start my presentation. Um, stop sharing here. Hi everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you see my screen, Joy? Great. So, um, this is the topic that I'm going to like. You know, continue from Ajahn Sutina. Uh, well, he gave his view on um, this topic in linguistic perspective. Uh, now I will continue my job to talk about this topic in the view of education and um instruction okay so this is the outline of my presentations so we i will have first, two rounds the first round we go with digital transformation in educational context for the second round i will go for how to reinvent and redesign um the lessons and then will be q and a time for everyone okay so this is my first round here okay so as we're facing the huge disruption by the pandemic crisis, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we from all walks of life are thrown into like what we call compulsory situation with no option. But actually, we call this period where we are now a disruptive era already. You know what disruptive era is? 
Well, it means it's a time where the digital platforms in all business are shaking the traditional ones, but this gigantic disruption rushes us to the change faster than we think. So every country is looking for the way to make the learning continue despite all misfortune. Thailand also launched the policy as a solution to assist Thai learners to be able to learn. Okay, so these are the strategies. Um, I'm not going to spend the time with all the details here, but in short, to ensure that no Thai learners are left behind, we offer the distance learning through what we call DLTV. Um, the primary students study from TV and do the tasks, do the homework, whereas the um, secondary levels or secondary ones go with both platforms with digital TV and online learning. And seeing the last one, the parents are, or, are also asked to assist the students learning. Sometimes we call it home-based learning or um, on-air learning. Well, at this point, I sympathize the, you know, the parents who, a parent teachers who need to do the double roles here in the situation. Yeah. And this is like, you know, the results from my mini survey um, using word association. They need to give one word. Um, the responders are the respondents are the students from the faculty of education. So this one is a one word um, association with their experience of you know learning online. They have the experience. They are they all are all thrown to like you know the situation like the teachers. Um, so you may see that the words they give um, they are both positive and negative. And regarding other question, right? I asked about uh, if they are they if they feel comfortable learning at home, well if 50-50, uh, and if they are ready for learning online, 50-50. But when it comes to the question that of their preference, if they would like to like you know um, let's say learn in the actual classroom or online a hundred percent go for like physical uh, classroom and this is a result statistic come from like Thai MOOC uh, Thailand Cyber University or Thai MOOC is a project um, funded by Thai government, you may see the lines, um, the curve of like, you know, the two lines are totally at significant uh, difference level. Um, so the first line is the number of the enrollment for the like open course, right? Um, open courses uh, in the Thai MOOC project. And the lower line is reflect the number of people who graduate, which is, you know, this is totally normal. Every online courses, there are always the big rates of dropout rates. This is totally normal. And from the results of the survey and, you know, this uh, statistic, what tells you? It tells that, you know, the online learning might have some like, you know, negative, uh, negative side that we need to like, you know, uh, consider, right? Okay, so to um, get to in, to take a look at what we need to do to give a quality online learning. So I came across this like 11 standards from A to K here. And I think they are very interesting. This is like, you know, the standards from the US for online, quality online teaching. So what they expect the teachers to do, see all those keywords here. So there'll be effective online instruction, um, learning engagement, active learning, participation, collaboration, um, feedback, ethics, and diversity of learning uh, student uh, academic needs. So, so on. So how can we like, you know, um, turn into like, or reach his uh, standards then? That's a teacher. I think we'd better start by a learn to relearn, okay? So from the unlearn to relearn, what we need to unlearn? 
so when the teacher starts you know teaching online like you know uh being in this situation and some of them including me sometimes we like stick to the way we used to teach in the physical classroom which might not work for the like you know the online one so uh what could be like you know old style of traditional teaching like teacher as a fountain of knowledge maybe okay but in the online you need to give the role more to your learners especially you know the the learning won't take place if you like dominate the class and the um, textbook led learning even in the actual teaching textbook led learning might not work that well and reticence as goal well if you have the silent class uh, sometime in physical uh, classroom teaching you might be happy because you know you can continue your teaching smoothly and carry out the teaching without uh, obstacles but in online learning if everyone you know turn off the cams stay in silence well this is not a good sign at all okay and the classroom uh, learning time what is about the classroom learning time well classroom learning time is um usually at university level in thailand we have like three hours of um classroom time uh per week per course and for young let's say school learners um basic education we have uh, usually 50 minutes to 60 minutes per period of time right but the thing is that the online teaching is unlike the um the physical classroom teaching if you spend totally the time as you manage in your classroom learning time both agents teachers and students are drained or will be drained uh, I think you've got some experience from that already. So the time allotment and of classroom learning time should be reshaped or redesigned. Okay, so how could we relearn here? Uh, how can we like, you know, make the students learn through discovery, like uh, promote collaboration, uh, interaction, promote motivation, engagement and support. And the most important thing I think that, you know, you need to budget the time for the self-learning for the students in the design um, to like, you know, um, support autonomy, um, which would be, you know, um, sustainable, you know, learning if they have their own autonomy. So what are the challenge here? So how can we uh, redesign to shift from learning paradigm to, uh, no, sorry, from teaching paradigm to learning paradigm? And what is the know what and the know how of the online tools designed to promote desirable agents to reach the standards? So those are tools. I won't talk about the tools much here because um, I see many webinars nowadays that you know they talk about you know how to use a tool, what tools can be can work with the teaching. Um, I will talk about some tools with the design in the second round. Uh, but those are free tools. Those are free tools, and you can, like, you know, access. Um, um, so let me share a sample lesson plan with the design. Um, you know that might, you know, give you an idea. Uh, from Tara Tevsan Lee. Uh, he is a teacher at T Pangkorn Vidyapat Tawivatana Schools. He's my former student at the Faculty of Education, Jula. He's now preparing the online lessons for the next semesters. So what I would like you to like observe from the plan is how the design go for self-learning time, how he can allot the class time, and uh, what are the online tools he used here. So this one is like, you know, the uh, unit called breaking news, okay? So this one is like, you know, when we write a plan, we need to base on the national standards core curriculum. And this is the learning outcomes. The unit is divided into four lessons, sub lessons, and then there'll be like, you know, search for information, um, like create a poster, like working online, present the work and talk together. And if you like, you know, see um, the tools he used here, 
okay, ePuzzle, Facebook group, those tools are not the fancy tools. This is the tools that you are familiar with that you can work, but work it well. You know, by using the tools, I always tell my students that, you know, the tools, online tools are just the tool. Um, it will work effectively or like um, have like the, um, let's say the impact or not. It depends on how the teachers decide. Okay, so this one, the first stage is very important and crucial when you do things online. You need to prep your students to be ready for the online learning. So this one, uh, they learn how to search the information. They learn how to like, you know, uh, to see, then see the outcomes, expected outcomes here. And, you know, this is the, the way that they can feel ready to learn next. The lesson, the lessons will be create a poster. Again, the tools they use are really, um, let's say it's not that fancy. We, they use YouTube, uh, they use uh, PowerPoint and the uh, Zoom. You may see that the time allotment is so short here, right? Because, you know, um, if you notice that, you know, nowadays attention span of like the viewers of the clip and for the students, they are very short. If you make a long clip or if you make a long learning online, you'll be, they will be drained, okay? And then present the work is on Facebook group, right? Ajahn uh, Kap, I think your, your slide is not moving right now. Uh, my slide is not moving? Yeah, it's currently frozen to the sample lesson plan. So I think some couldn't follow. All right, so I'm at the lesson three now. Do you see that? No? What, what we see now is unit plan breaking news. All right, all right. So I will stop sharing and sorry for that because my screen worked that well. Now you see the plan. All right. Yes, it's working now. Okay, so let me, you know, this is a unit plan, right? And talk about breaking news. This is um, like the sub lessons I talk about and the tools and everything. So this one is like, you know, the, the period of the prep students to learn like the searching skills and you know, how to, how to search for information, right? Uh -huh. um, and this one is for um, creating the work. And I talk about the time allotment, which is very short. Um, not not a very long long minutes or long you know time allotment for that because you know working online you need to like minimize not minimize but then again assign the time appropriately and uh, this one is to present the work is in the Facebook group so they use two days here right uh -huh. we can like define the time as normal classroom time that three min um ten minutes seven minutes or like, you know, in the presentation, because this one is asynchronous. Asynchronous means that um, you can delay the response, right? Uh, it's not a real time communication. So two days assigned. For assessment, they use poster uh, Ruby star. This one is an online rubrics and peer assessment. They use like Facebook group. See all the tools, they are not fancy, okay? And lesson three, they use Zoom as to like, you know, to uh, let's say, make sure that the learning of everyone is on the same page to for wrap up session, right? Uh -huh. I think his design is aimed for like, you know, um, conference to, 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 to discuss. So what is good about this plan is that, you know, when, when he designed, he aimed to promote the desirable agents, as we see here, how to engage learners, how to support the learners' autonomy. So this one, this plan is one of the best guidelines if you would like to like, you know, design your teaching with like so simple tools. Let me end by session by, by this slide. Well, I came across this and um, I think it's interesting. Okay, have you seen this one before? So what I want to be in during COVID, you know, I'm not sure whether, you know, which zone are you in now? Are you still in the fear zone? But hopefully I think all the teachers are coming 
you know, passing the fear zone already. Now we are at learning zone and, you know, be prepared to go to the growth zone later. Okay, well, thank you, Joey.